and praise the Lord. It is such a joy to be home. It is such a joy to be home because I was here about 10 years ago, although I, I, I was here last Sunday, but I was in Kenya 10 years ago. And uh, in this, those 10 years ago, while I was away, a lot of things have happened. Children have been born and they have become, they, they have attained their school going age. And uh, people have continued to believe in God. And the reason that we are here is because you have trusted God. And then uh, me and my family, as we went to the U.S., uh, we went to the U.S. in a place that uh, we did not know. And the Lord God was faithful to us as a family. And we saw the goodness of the Lord. Our children were young when we went. But now they have attained uh, age, uh, their respective ages, and uh, uh, our daughter Rosemary, the firstborn, and uh, she was, she is a member of this congregation, and she ministered as a small baby. She sang here as a small baby, and now she's a worship leader uh, in our church in Atlanta, Georgia. Then we have our son Samuel. And Samuel is also in the worship lead, in the worship team, and Daniel. But they no longer live with us. Daniel is in Canada, and uh, Samuel is in California. And we live in Atlanta, Georgia. That is where we are advancing the kingdom of God. Amen. And God, well, all I can tell you is that God is faithful. Amen. From this altar, I was commissioned out. And I'm telling you, brethren, God is real. If there is anybody that doubts the reality of God, if there is anybody that doubts in God, what is there in God? Let me tell you, friends, that God is real, that wherever you go, and you have believed and trusted God, that the God of heaven will be with you. And as he has promised, he will never leave you, nor forsake you. Today, my message is about you. It's about... A search for your control over your circumstances. Because you find yourself in situations that demand that you either be somebody else or you either do like somebody else, you imitate somebody else, as you try to find out your place in life. When Jesus Christ came and said, well, I have come, and declared that God so loved the world, that whoever believes in him may have life and have it in abundance. What that meant is, if you believed God, then your life would not, not be the same again. And believing in God, is it that you are going to wait on God, sit down and wait on God, is it that we are going to pray and fast seven days a week? Is it that you are going to the mountains uh, to seek God? But in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, the Bible says, Who who believe, he who comes to God, must believe that God is. That means that God is in existence. You must believe that God is not somewhere else. That means when we come into the sanctuary, Sometimes we, we say we are inviting the presence of God. I know how many of you have prayed a prayer like that? That, oh God, come. We are inviting you. Today I bring you a message that you have no opportunity of ever inviting God. Because God is always with you. And your doctrine and what you believe in, immediately you believe that God is always with you that means God is waiting on you not you waiting on God God is waiting on you to engage him because God wants to partner with you so that he can manifest his glory and life in your own life first and more foremost that you may be a witness says so he who comes to God must believe 
that God is. And once you believe that God is, and you are positioned, you position yourself for God to manifest himself in your life. Because today there is a cry everywhere. There are chaos, there, there is corruption in our country. And uh, unfortunately, our country is lacking very high in the performance of that evil vice, corruption. People are wondering how people are surviving in Kenya because of the levels of corruption. But in spite of that, there is men and women who fear God. There is men and women, and that is you, who want to stand in the gap so that our nation is not destroyed. I want you to open together with me in the book of Luke chapter 5. In the book of Luke chapter 5, and uh, verse 17. I want us to read this passage of scripture. And from it, we will mind a few things that will help us as we navigate our way through life and the challenges that we face. One day as he, Jesus, was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee, from Judea and Jerusalem, were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralytic on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the cloud, they went out on the rooftop, on the roof, and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, while in front, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began, began making, thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? How, who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew that they were what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk. But that you may know, the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I told you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood in, up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. Because you are here in our midst. I pray that you may break this word for us. That it may nourish our spirits. And challenge our lives to move to the next level in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here we have read a story, an incident about a situation that was in a particular village. And Jesus was about doing what he did best. Teaching the word so that faith may be built in people so that they may connect to God, with God. Because faith comes by hearing, and by hearing, the word of God. So Jesus was teaching, and people had come from all over. There were the Pharisees and the teachers of the law that had come, not much more so to hear the word, but nevertheless they were hearing the word. But they had come with minds to judge and disqualify Jesus as a rabbi. And as Jesus was talking to them, there is a certain group of men realized that Jesus was in the neighborhood. And they identified a problem in their community. 
And the problem they identified was there was a paralytic man. And he was, he was already an issue in the community. And they decided among themselves that they were to take action. And therefore they prepared this man. They built, uh, they built like something like a bed, held it, and they took him to Jesus. But as they were taking him to Jesus, they immediately realized that there was a big crowd of people around where Jesus was, and so they could not get through. They decided, well, we cannot get through, but then there is something we'll do. However they did it, we are not told. But the scriptures tell us that they climbed to the rooftop. And when they climbed to the rooftop, then they removed the tiles. And from the tiles, they let the man right into where Jesus was. Many times we see problems and issues in our neighborhood. Even in our own families. Even in our own lives. And when we see those issues, we do not know how to handle them because there is a lot of noise in the crowd. There is a lot of opposition wherever we are. I think everybody now is familiar with the word opposition. And in the word opposition, many times we think about political opposition. But there is always opposition in your life. Whenever you want your life to change, let's say you're in school and you want you, you are in school and you are applying yourself to study, your opposition comes to you right from within yourself. That you have to deal with yourself in order for you to go where you want to go. Even before you are opposed by anybody else, you already have an opposition inside of you. And as an individual, you must make a determination to break through that opposition in order for you to progress and to move on where you want to be. Now the scriptures tell us that wherever you want to go and wherever you want to be, there is somebody else that has preceded you there. And God is already there. You are not going to find God because God is already there. I began by telling you that you are not inviting God, but you are positioning yourself to allow God to work in your life. You are going to fight through that opposition, and as you work your way through the opposition, you might do things that are not orthodox, things that are not very familiar. Because God is looking for men and women who identify a problem, and when they identify a problem, they are not actually waiting on God. Because God has been waiting on you. They are, God is waiting on you so that you may take action. And when you take action, then you realize that God was already there present waiting for you and praise the Lord. The Bible says that the power of God, the power of God was present to heal. That there was already power of God present to heal. So these men went up the roof. And as they went up the roof, working on their faith, they lowered the net. And the net came right in front of Jesus. And then Jesus looked at them and said, well, there were a lot of people in that midst, but we have not heard about anybody else that was healed in that incident. But what we hear is about this paralytic man that was healed because of the faith of his friends. Let me tell you, friends, this morning, that there are a lot of people out there that are suffering. There are a lot of people there that are sick. There are a lot of people that are waiting on you to form a group, to, be, to come together and say together we are standing in the gap for our nation. Together we are standing in the gap for our community. 
Probably Jesus has been crowded and we cannot see Jesus clearly. But we know that Jesus is the power of God in our midst to change our situations. But the clouds that could be gathering in churches have already clouded the understanding and the access to Jesus Christ. Probably some people would, would try to fight Jesus Christ in the church. And they would not find him. Because there is already somebody explaining Jesus doesn't work that way. God does not move this way. God requires you, it's required of you, to take that personal initiative. When the Bible says he who comes to God must believe that he is. That means you must make the steps. You must be engaged in the process because there is a process that God wants to engage in. And the process is you take the first step in advancing to what you want God to do for your life. If you are at home and waiting on God and doing nothing, let me assure you this, that you leap nothing because nothing will happen. But when you take one step, the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of God. And who is a righteous man? A righteous man is a man that wants to align himself with the will and the purposes of God for his life. And so when you take a step, then God takes a step with you. When you take a step, then the Bible says that they are ordered of the Lord. And not only ordered of the Lord, but the Lord becomes your guide. He becomes the one that is guiding you and leading me, you. And finally, you find that whatever you are seeking, whatever you are desiring, because you have taken a step, because you have done something that God then multiplies what you have done. Praise be to the Lord. The Bible says they lowered the man. And when they lowered the man, the Bible says, and, God, and Jesus saw their faith. Hallelujah. What have you put your faith in? As you take your step, you must be clear and identify what is this that I am believing God for? Not just believing in God, that is good. Not just be to be blessed with what? Not that God, you want God to speak about what? Because God will speak. But if you do not know what you are expecting on God, God to speak on, you will never know that he has spoken. If you are not expecting something specific, let me tell you friends, even when it comes, you will not recognize it. Have you noted that when you get, when you, if you, if you buy a car, or if you, if you are building a house, you see a lot of houses being built. You see a lot of houses being built. When a young man starts arranging for a for his wedding, he realizes that there are many commit, wedding committees elsewhere. When you buy a Toyota, every uh, every other car I had in front of you is a Toyota. Why? Because your eyes become open to that which possesses you and begins to possess you. Your faith is moved by that which has possessed you and has apprehended you and God is wanting you to identify it and say, God, this is it. Until you nail it, it will not come. Until you call it by name and work towards it because not only calling it by name, there is a process for you to get to where you want to be. There is a process after calling it a name, you must become one with that which you desire and then to realize that your partner is God. And that you are not waiting on him. The Bible says, when he saw their faith, when he saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Did you know that all others may forsake you, but you are a friend of God. And because you are a friend of God, it doesn't matter what your neighbor thinks about you. It doesn't matter what your dad thinks about you. It doesn't matter what your mom thinks about you. But God, your creator, with the best intentions and plans for your life, 
which, which your parents do not know, calls you my friend. No wonder I sing a song and said, Hallelujah, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. And even you can be certain that you are a friend of God, and God is working in your life to will and to do his good pleasure. And his good pleasure is that you may have life and have it in abundance. Amen. The good pleasure of God is that you may be healed and healed completely. The good pleasure of God is that you may be prospered and prospered so that God may be glorified in your life. Because God is about the kingdom. It's a, God's agenda on earth is a comprehensive rule and influence of the kingdom of God in every aspect of the society. In, in commerce or in economics, in wealth, in politics, in education, in the marketplace, that God's influence may be felt in every community where we are. A few years ago, I lived in uh, Jujaro, and I noted something when I was there. Some people came and opened a library, and after they opened a library, in my neighborhood, they began to even encourage people in the community to go to the library. But when you went to the library, they were very selective in the books they stocked. And as they stocked those books, then people would come, those, some people would go there and read. And by that time, I was studying for my CPA. And then after that, I noted that the same people had acquired a property in the neighborhood. It was very strange how they began to influence this community. And finally, as I speak to you today, that community has been taken over. That community has been taken over in its totality. Why? Because of a people that identified a need and they said this is where we are going to be. And I thank God for where I'm standing today. I thank God for the where I'm standing today and the impact that the church and this community and this altar is having in the neighborhood and regions beyond. That from a pig stud, from a pig stud, from a pig stud across the street in Mirema, where we gathered and called upon the God of heaven. But today it's a different story. And the territory is even much more to be covered. There is more territory. There is more mountain even for us to possess and to conquer for the glory of God. Amen. Oh yes, I see Mrs. Carugano. Right. They used to come and just pour water on the dirt. In America, we, don't, we call it dirt. They would pour water on the, on the floor because when we began to worship before we left there, we were of a different color. And we were full of mud because of dust. But God is faithful. Whenever you identify a problem and God is waiting on you so that as you identify a problem, you are willing to do the unorthodox, the unfamiliar. But they climbed on the rooftop. Something that was probably to be loved at. But it is because they had a goal and a purpose. And their vision was this. This paralytic man, immediately he comes into contact with Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. His life will be changed and the community will be changed. And so have a responsibility. You have a responsibility towards your neighbor. You have a responsibility towards your relatives. You have a responsibility towards your children. 
By whatever means, bring them to the altar. By whatever means, bring them to the altar. Don't say that. You know the children these days, they decide what they want to do. If, they, if you allow them to decide to do, what, to do what they need to do, let me tell you, finally they will decide for you. And it will be too late. The Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said a word, your sins are forgiven. And the sins were not only forgiven, but this man was healed. Today, you are here in our midst. And probably, there is an issue that has paralyzed you. In your life, you feel paralyzed. Because you have been looking for a job. And no door has been opening for you. You feel paralyzed because of this sickness that has been following you all this time. You feel paralyzed because nobody seems to care. But I came to tell you today that the power of God is here to deliver you. Amen. The power of God is here to set you free. The power of God is here to heal the brokenhearted. The power of God is here to unlock those areas of your life that you feel that they have been clogged for a long time. Because Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, Emmanuel, is here. Let us rise up. I want you to make a, take a step. I want you to believe God for one thing. This morning, I know you have a lot of needs. You could be having a lot of needs. But I want you to believe God for one thing. And like this man, I want you to come to God believing that he is. And the Bible says, not only is he, but that he is a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. What is this that you are believing God for? What is this that you have been calling upon God that he may do in your life? That you may be a light in your family, that you may be a light in the community, that you may be a light in your apartment complex, that you may be a light wherever you are. What is this that you are calling upon God for? Believing God for? I want to believe God together with you. Because I have seen, I am not old, but I have a few years, Jim. I have a few years. And I have seen God's faithfulness. I have seen God's faithfulness. The gospel that I believed as a teenager, the God that I believed when I did not know what I was believing in, that that God is faithful. I want you to come. And I want us to believe God. I want us to believe God for your... Whatever it is, I want us to believe God. For your sake, these altars have been raised. For your sake, the Lord of heaven sent his son Jesus Christ for you. If you are sick, God is ready to align you today. God is able to align you today. It doesn't matter the sickness. It doesn't matter the paralysis. God is willing to deliver you. Please make a move. Come forward and let us believe God for whatever it is your issue is. And today, mark it. Today, I want you to believe God. I want this to be the beginning of a new phase in your life in Jesus' name. I want us to believe God that today will be the beginning of a new season in your life in Jesus' name. Because the God of heaven, brethren, the God of heaven is faithful. He came that we may have life. He came that we may see life. And he came that he may touch our bodies and heal us. Oh God of heaven, look at the lives of your people. My Lord and my God, I pray that you will touch them, that you will heal them, that you will deliver them, oh God. My Lord and my God, in Jesus' name, 
Oh, King of glory, how I pray. Everlasting Father, that in us you have been faithful and manifested yourself in a, in a mighty way, oh God of glory, that you will send your one in their hearts, oh God. I send your one in their lives, oh God, that you may touch and heal them, oh God. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ, my Father and my God, how I pray that, oh God of glory, that your glory and your power will come down. Manifest yourself in the lives of these people, oh God. They have come to you believing that you are able, oh God. Manifest your ability in their lives. Manifest your ability, oh God, in their situations in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, Lord of glory. I come against those sicknesses. I come against those, those sicknesses in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against cancer. I come against paralysis, oh God, of any kind in Jesus' name. And I pray that my Father and my God, that thou shalt heal your people. Oh yes, heal and deliver your people. Oh yes, Lord, touch them and heal them, Lord. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ, they are those that have been seeking you, O oh God. Even concerning jobs, O oh God, and various other situations, O oh God. My Father and my God, I pray. Yes, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed of every sickness, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, thou shalt be healed. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. By the strength of Jesus Christ, you are healed. Oh, yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, my Father and my God, that He will touch your people. Oh, yes, God of glory, that He will touch your people. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ, everlasting Father, that He will touch your people. Oh, yes, that He would heal them, oh God. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, our Father and our God, we look to you, O oh God, because you are the Alpha and the Omega, Lord. You are the one who touches us. You are the one who heals our diseases. Yes, Lord, remember this that are here, O oh God. They have issues with their businesses, O oh God. I pray, my Father and my God, that you will give them strategies, O oh God. That you give them alternative plans, O oh God. Oh, yes, in the name of Jesus Christ, my Father and my God. I pray for your wisdom. I pray for your understanding. I pray, O oh God of glory, that you will touch them. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, everlasting Father. Lord, we thank you. Oh, yes, Lord, we bless your name. Oh, yes, Lord, we bless your name. Holy, holy, holy is your name, O oh God of glory. Holy, holy is your name, Lord of glory. Power and majesty belongs to you, O oh God. Healing is in your wings, O oh mighty God. Deliverance with your mighty hand. Oh yes, deliver your people. Set them free, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, let bring their children back home, O oh God. Yes, bring their children back home, O oh God. Yes, bring their children back home, yes. Bring their children back home. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, we thank you. Oh, yes, Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, our Father. Our Father and our God, we thank you because you are God who answers prayer. And we thank you because you have answered every prayer that we have called and we have mentioned. And now in Jesus' name, we receive and celebrate. And now in Jesus' name, we receive and celebrate. We receive and celebrate in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I can dance a thousand miles. Amen, amen. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible says, he who comes to God must believe that he is. 
And that is a reward of them that seek him. You have been rewarded for your faith and your trust in God. You have been rewarded. You are need of been met in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us give a mighty shout unto the Lord. Let us celebrate the God of heaven. Let us celebrate the God of heaven who has done it for you, who has done it for your life. Let us just dance and celebrate because God has done it. God has delivered you. God has answered you. And God has given you a testimony. And the testimony is true that God is alive and is working in our midst. Glory to God. Father, in Jesus' name, raise up your hands. I bless your people. Yes. I commend them to you. Yes. I commend them to you, O oh God. Yes. They are prayers, O oh God. Yes. Bringing them to the altar. Yes, yes Lord, we are needs. Yes. Bringing them to the altar. Yes. And believing it with each one of them. Yes. My Lord and my God. That every need that we have presented yes. has been met. Yes. And it will be manifested. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.